Hey view devs, welcome back to LearnView. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about vModel, an important directive that provides two-way data binding between an input and form data or between two components. It's a simple concept that I'm sure all of you have used before, but the true powers of vModel take some time to understand. So first, what is view vModel? Well, like we were just talking about, vModel is a directive that we can use in template code. And a directive is a template token that tells Vue how we want to handle our DOM. In the case of vModel, it tells Vue that we want to create a two-way data binding between a value in our template and a value in our data properties. A pretty common use case for vModel is when designing forms and inputs. We can use it to have our DOM input elements modify data inside of our Vue instance. Let's take a look at a simple example that uses vModel on a text input. Let's start off in our script. So inside of our data, we'll return a reactive property called value and give it a default value of hello world. Then inside of our template, we'll create an input of type text and say vModel equals value. And then just so we can see what's going on, let's print out value. So when we type around in our text input, we'll see our data property is changing. So what's the difference between vModel and vBind? And sometimes these two directives get switched up pretty commonly. The difference is that vModel provides two-way data binding. In our example, that means when our data changes, our input will change too. And if our input changes, our data changes. However, vBind only binds data one way. And this is useful when creating a single direction data flow in your apps, but you really have to be careful when choosing between vModel and vBind. So next, let's talk about modifiers for vModel. Vue gives us a few different modifiers that allow us to change the functionality of our vModel. They can be added like this by adding a dot after our vModel, and they can even be chained together to apply multiple modifiers. So the first one we'll look at is .lazy. By default, vModel syncs with the state of our view instance on every single input event. This includes things like gaining focus, losing focus, and being blurred. The .lazy modifier changes our vModel so that it only syncs after change events. This reduces the number of times our vModel is trying to sync with our view instance, and in some cases can increase performance. Next, let's look at .number. Often, our inputs will automatically type the input as a string, even if we give the data a type of number. One way to ensure that our value is being handled as a number is to use this dot number modifier. According to the view docs, if the input changes and the new value cannot be parsed by parse float, then the last valid value of input is returned instead. So if we were typing, let's say six, our value would be six. Then if we typed F, our value would still be six. And finally, let's look at dot trim. And similar to trim methods in most programming languages, the trim modifier removes leading or trailing white space before returning the value. All right, now that we know the basics of vModel by looking at inputs, let's check out an interesting use for vModel, creating a two-way data bind between components. In Vue, data binding has two main steps. One, passing our data from our parent, and two, emitting an event from our child to update the parent. Using vModel on a custom component allows us to pass a prop and listen to an emit event with just one directive. So if we take a look at this code, just by saying vModel value, it's the same as passing a prop called model value that's equal to value, and then listening for an update model value event where we set value to whatever's being passed in our event. Okay, let's take a little deeper look at this. Let's continue with our example of using vModel for forms, and we'll create a custom text input called custom text input .view. The default name for a value passed using vModel is model value, which is what we'll be using for this example. However, if we did want to give it a custom name, we can just add a colon after our vModel and then type whatever we want the name to be. And then the name of the update event will be update colon, whatever the name we're passing is. Here's a little handy graphic from the view docs that kind of summarizes what's going on. Title is the name of the prop that's going to be available in the child component. And then page title is the data in our parent component that we're binding. So now that we have our parent component set up to both pass the prop and listen to the update event, let's access it from our child component. There are two things we have to do inside custom text input .view. Accept our vModel value as a prop, and then second, emit an update event when our input changes. Okay, let's first declare it as a prop inside of our script. Next, we'll just create a basic label and then an input with a type of text and a placeholder. Then, we'll bind the input's value to our model value prop, and whenever there's an input event, we'll emit the new value using update model value. And if you look at this emit, you can see that the data we're binding to our event is event.target.value, which is the actual string value of this input. So basically, whenever we emit an event, we're going to be changing value in the parent to event.target.value, which is a new string. Now, if we go back and look at our browser, we can see it in action. Whenever we type in our child component input text, the print statement in our parent component is also being updated. Fantastic. All right, so we've covered a few basics of using vModel to bind data between two components. 
Let's take a look at some more advanced ways to use the vModel directive. So we can use vModel multiple times for a single component. To use vModel multiple times, we just have to be sure to name each prob uniquely and access it correctly inside of our child component. So let's add a second vModel to our input called last name. In the parent component, we can say vModel colon and then give it a unique name. And we'll just say last name equals last name. And then let's go down to our data and make our last name property. Then inside of our child component, we can just add last name to our props and then simply create another label and input that says last name that binds the value to last name and on an input event, emits an event with a proper name, update colon last name. If we go look at our project now, we can see both V models working independently. Another really cool thing we can do is add custom modifiers for our V model. We've seen the built-in modifiers like lazy and number, but there will come a time when we want to add our own. Let's say we want to create a modifier that removes all spaces from our input. We'll call it no white space. So let's add it to our value V model. And like the built-in modifiers, we can just add dot no dash white space. Then inside of our input component, we can capture the modifier using props. And the name for the custom modifiers is, well, name and then modifiers. So in this case, since the default name is model, it will be model modifiers. All right. So the first thing we want to do is change our input handler to use a custom method so that we can make any modifications to our data before emitting to our parent component. We'll call our custom method emit value and it will accept the name of the property being edited as well as the event object. So we can say emit value, model value, and then event. In our emit value method, before we actually emit to our parent, we want to check our modifiers. And if our no white space modifier is true, we can modify our value before emitting it to the parent. First, we'll get the value of the input by saying let val equal event.target.value. Then we'll check the model modifiers by saying this dot model modifiers and then no white space. And if that's true, then we can just use a simple string replace and replace all of the white space with an empty string. And then finally, after that check, we can emit our method by saying update prop name. And using prop name here means that we can use this emit value for all of our different props. And then finally, the value, which may or may not have the white space removed. Okay, awesome. Let's take a look at what we have. So whenever our input changes and our text has a space, it will be removed inside of the parent value. And since we're using vModel, this will change it back inside the child too. All right, awesome. Hopefully this quick little video taught you something about vModel. In its base use case like forms and input data, vModel is a really simple concept. However, when we begin to create custom components and work with a lot more complex data structures, we can really unleash the true power of vModel. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And as always, Please like and subscribe for more free view content. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.